James Helder, welcome to Full Core Football 24. I'm in Liverpool today. Quite privileged to be joined by former Chelsea, Brighton, Sheffield Wednesday, Huddersfield, and for Apos Philos star, none other than Leon Knight. How are you, sir? I'm all right. How are you? I'm very well. Very well. I've got to say thank you very much for agreeing to come on and give us a bit of your time. Yeah, it's cool, man. One of the most controversial characters in football and in life. <laughs> that are about life, but on, on the net and on, in football, yeah. We see a certain persona of you on social media of where you are now and what stage you're at and what's going on. But I'd like to look back today on, on your career, how it got started, how you came through the ranks at Lillyshaw, at Chelsea and all the things that went on in between that. So let's, let's start the journey. Let's talk about your upbringing a little bit. Um, I wasn't really into football, to be honest. It was more of like just fighting. Like Around our way, we were just fighting. Like People from the Everest State. So that's like around Hackney, around their ways? No, I, I was born in Hackney and... All my family's in Hackney, but I, I was born, I was raised in Bow. Like, I don't know whether my dad thought it was a bit too, uh, it was a bit too rough around the Hackney side where, where my family was at that time. Like all my uncles and cousins and all that. So we, we, we moved to Bow. So for those that don't know, Bow has a serious reputation as being the home of grime music, the, yeah. the place where it all kind of Wiley, started. Wiley, Trim, Lee Brasco, um, Getz. Um, so many East London grand man there. Uh, so what was life like for you then, day in, day out, growing up as a youngster? Give us a, a little insight. Just normal, like everybody else's. Um, like, what age are you talking? Just growing up, sort of, before you were sort of playing grassroots football, your early days, so you weren't really into football. So what, 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 was life, what was life like for you? Basically, we was just messing around, being kids on the estate. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Weren't really, no one really knew that in the end, you need a career and all of that. We didn't know none of that. We was just running around being kids. And um, you yeah, got three we, sisters as well, right? I got two sisters. Two sisters. Yeah. Are they older or younger? One's older, one's younger. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So what age did you start playing for Senrab? Because About. Senrab's got such a huge reputation for the players that they've produced. Over yeah, the they years. produced like Ledley King, John Terry, uh, Jermaine Defoe. Insane. Um, yeah. Just really, really like high level what uh, you, footballers they produced. Let's just have a look at some of the other guys they produced. Lee Boyer, Sol yeah. Campbell, yeah. Ugo Ekiog, yeah. Fitz Hall, yeah. Muzzy Is It. Yeah. The list is on. And on Paul Kanchelski. Yeah. The list is ridiculous. Yes, it's really, really, really it's ridiculous. Dumb. Who and was in that team with you? Who, who would have played in that squad with you? Um, Defoe, it was me and Defoe up front. Yeah, um, Defoe up front. Mm. Um, I'm trying to think of who you're gonna who you're gonna know from. I don't think you really know anybody else. But we didn't get beat for about 18 months. Okay. Yeah, we was we was we was phenomenal. What was the rep, what was the, the sort of the vibe like in the team? And how did you get on with Jermaine Defoe? Oh, no, we we, we was cool. Everyone was like, my dad was a gaffer. So do you get what I'm saying? It wasn't really nothing that man can step out of line and do all that. That was long. Um, but. We was just we just went out there. We trained. Now nah, we would like we was doing man training at age ten, like real men's running and stuff like that. So come match day, we was just steamrolling teams. Do you know what I mean? And we weren't the biggest team either. We just had like a, a nasty tenacity and a nasty bite. And then when we got up front, it was just curtains. When you was playing for Senrab, was that the sort of times that you went to Lillyshaw? How yeah. Did that sort no, of no, 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 no. Lillyshaw's from. 14 to 16. Okay, so Senrab was pre Lillyshaw days. Yeah, and yeah. and your club football, as in Arsenal, Tottenham, Chelsea, but it's not full-time. You're not a pro yet. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Okay. So after Senrab, then comes that. Then comes Lillyshaw. So you're at your clubs for about a year and a bit. Um doing the YTS scheme and youth, to, youth, youth stuff and all of that. Whose boots did you clean? All right, listen to this, yeah? So, <laughs> um, <clears throat> how can I put it? I weren't really on cleaning boots. I tell you the God's honest truth, yeah? Really? But I weren't really on cleaning boots because it was at a period where it was like a transition where the older school man cleaned boots, but... The newer guys that came up, it was kind of like fade, it was like fiddling out, like it was fading out. It weren't really good. But anyway, they they matched me up with Zola, so 
Zola knew I weren't going to clean his boots. He knew they weren't going to get done to the perfection that he wants them done. So he called me in the changing room and he said, you don't worry, you don't have to clean my boots. I do my own boots. So I was like, all right, cool. Wow. You must have liked it then if he just, he just signed up. Nah, because he just knew he weren't going to get the, 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 what he needed. <laughs> I weren't dubbing in his boots. <laughs> I weren't cleaning it underneath. I was just like polishing them off on the top and that was it. They still had like the mud underneath and everything, bruv. I weren't really on it. Wow. But, um... He understood that as well, and he didn't make no, like, issue of it. He just said, I'll clean them. How old would you have been at that time? I'd have been about 13, 12. 13, yeah. 13, 12. Explain to me what it was like when you, you, you first got the, the call to go and join that club from San Rab or wherever you'd been playing. Well, what it was is I was at Tottenham. I was at Charlton with the four. Then we went Tottenham with the four. And then he went to, he went to West Ham. You and Defoe must have been very, very close at this age. Defoe lived in my house, basically. Do you get what I'm saying? Defoe lived in my house, basically. Like, uh, you know what? I ain't even going to go on, but Defoe lived in my house, basically. So, so yeah. You and him were more, more closer than, say, some family members. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Defoe. Defoe. So, so you're at Chelsea. You've, you've obviously, you've left Charlton. You've, you've left Tottenham. You've decided to... YTS at Chelsea, is that yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Explain to me the process from there, pick it up. A bunch of pricks at Chelsea. All really? like they're old a lot. Bar one or two, it was just a bunch of pricks. They weren't really like welcoming to bring you in. Everyone's on a cutthroat business. They all want to get in the first team. And if they see you doing better, it's like, ah, oh, do you get what I'm saying? It was like that sort of scene. And I came into Chelsea with a reputation of being a very good young footballer. And the next one to probably be in the first team and this, that, and blah, 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 and rare, rare, rare. And it was kind of like it didn't sit well with them. The older lot, anyway. The younger lot was cool, but the older lot, it, it kind of like it didn't sit well. But I don't give a shit anyway. Can I swear on here? You can say whatever. I you didn't like. give a fuck anyway because they couldn't do nothing to me. What 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 was the issue then? Just they didn't want to see young faces coming through and succeeding. In your opinion? Well, I died. I I did that sponsorship. Now I don't know if you're a footballer and you ain't got much or whatever, and you ain't got like you got to buy your own boots. And these times here, I'm talking like, what was that? 2000, 1999, 98. Many men didn't have a sponsorship. <laughs> I'm telling you the gods are this truth. Many men didn't have a sponsorship them times there. I had one. So it kind of didn't sit well. And them things there was like perks back in the day. Do you get what I'm saying? Man looked at you and thought, rah. I was just now on the phone just a minute ago. We got a, wash, we got a WhatsApp Lily Shaw group. A WhatsApp Lily Shaw group? Right. What, to give me a couple of old school names that are in that group. Default, Neil Dans. Um, there's loads, man. It's oh. really interesting. They're talking about bringing the whole Lily Shaw system back. Back. They it's have to so, bring it back. I don't so, know why they stopped anyway. It's been so successful for French football um, over the years, and they copied the system that was implemented here in Lily Shaw by the FA. So, They're dickheads. They should have done Let's talk about this group again. Sorry. Yeah, I'm so what was I saying? Who you got in the group? I've got like the foal. You might not know um, Phil Senior, who played in goal. Look, that's one of the pictures that I sent in. There's the foal in the background. Craig Woodman in there. Wow. Like we was, we was on that that team there. We was, we was phenomenal. That's we incredible. was like, we played like, we played like the clubs, um, Man United, all them clubs that was up them sides. Blackburn Rovers, Man City. Liverpool, and if I'm lying, people can come on, comment on this after and say whatever. Whoever's about at that time, these clubs were getting spanked. Literally spanked. Fives, sixes, all of that, spanked. Um, and obviously, that's, that's kind of like where clubs come to view you. Like, they know Lady Shaw, so they know the best talents. Like, there's... I think there's 100,000 people in era to go into Lillishaw as a top 16. Now, you get, it goes through stages throughout the year. And at the end of the year, you either get a letter that you're, you're in, or you get a letter saying, oh, well, um, well done, we can't take you on at this time. Now, it's usually 15 people that go in. Now, our age group was so mental, they had to take 16. They couldn't leave at one. They just couldn't leave that they one out. They couldn't leave at one. We, and they knew our year was the last year. The year up was Joe Cole, um, Ian Armstrong, um, Danny Webber, 
Leon, Mike, all these players, like, really, really good players. And um, it was a pleasure to play, play, like, in and around them and train. Obviously, the seniors done their own training and the juniors who was us, we done our training. Um, our manager was Keith Blunt. He's died now. Um, you got on well with Keith Blunt. At that yeah, stage. man, Keith Blunt was my guy. Man. That area in Lily Shaw. Mm. He was my guy. Why? What are you looking at, bruv? Like I've got some sort of issue with you. Sorry, bruv. Thought you was talking to no, me. No, eh? no. This this guy was looking at me like to say I'm not meant to be in it. But go on. <laughs> Sorry, bruv. I thought you was talking to me. Like, nah, no, 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 no. Um, but um, like you said, they're looking to bring the Lily Shaw hold set up back. I don't know why they stopped it in the first place. To be honest. Um, Everybody that came out of there turned pro. So that has to be a good thing. Do you know what I mean? Did you live there then? You yeah, lived, lived there? You lived there for two years. Yeah. Explain 24. to me that process. Because am I, am I right in thinking it was a school that took on footballers, but there would be normal pupils within that school? No. No. Explain so, it to me. Okay, you're, you're right in the sense, say, so you lived in a, um, a big, massive... If you look on, if you type in Lily Shaw in, 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 in uh, Google or whatever, you'll see a massive, like, old school building. That was our, that's where we lived. We lived on the top floor. The top floor was just massive. It don't even, uh, like, you can't even get the grasp of it when you're just looking at it. You have to actually be in. There's, like, 30-odd rooms just on the top floor and common rooms and TV rooms and everything. So that's where we was. Now, that was our whole building, that's where the seniors and the, and the juniors was. That was our whole building. So we lived there for two years. We'll go home like every six, seven weeks um, for a weekend or a couple of days. But we lived there for two years. And we went to a school to learn education where other pupils, normal pupils were, okay. which I didn't think was a good idea, by the way. We got into some madness in them in that it must school. Must have been a bit strange, like you're playing for your school team and whatever, and then you look round, you've got these England schoolboys internationals just doing your French class with you or whatever. Bro, when I'm telling you, we didn't play football in school, in in the normal school way. No, I was talking educate. from the point of view of the the other lads that would have been there before you. But we didn't school. know that we was gonna do all that. Defoe didn't know that he was going to be whatever. Joe Cole didn't know that he was going to do that. But Yeah, but surely someone will be playing England <laughs> schoolboy at that time, right? We were always playing England schoolboys. Yeah. I mean, I didn't because they, 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 they done a dirty on me because they said I didn't play for my school team. Now, you have to play for your school team in order to play for the schoolboys. Do you I understand what? How come you didn't play for your school team? Because they were shit. <laughs> That's simple. Yeah, you point, play yeah the point blank period, they were shit. <laughs> so I kind of had to swerve that. Otherwise, I'd have been having head loss. We'd been losing. I'd have been having head loss. And I know we shouldn't be losing to certain sides. That's the kind of person I am. So I just, I just, I just allowed it. I played a couple of games, but I just allowed it. It weren't really a thing. That, there were not really no one in the school that, you know, you're going to get on the end of a cross from. Weren't, there weren't no one in the school like that. Do you know what I mean? It was, you compare that when you're playing with players that live of the standard that you're playing with every day at Chelsea, at Lily Shaw. Well, I didn't play, so I couldn't, I didn't play with the school kids, so I couldn't compare. Do you get what I'm saying? But school time, you could see them. They were shit. You could see them. Nothing weren't going on, bruv. No, no, no one made it from my school to say, yeah, you lot was wrong. No one made it, so. The Chelsea team at the time, times were a different, a different. It was the era. first, it, Abramovich just came. Yeah. The money came into Chelsea, the influx of, of talent coming from abroad into the club. Talk to me about it from your point of view. I don't know, because Abramovich was on his way to Tottenham. That's what we heard. And then he saw the club and said, oh, we would, this one. That's exactly how it went. I heard anyway. So the worst thing about it is what I regret is I left one day before he came. That's not an exaggeration. One day, I had a fight with one of my teammates, Stephen Watt. I didn't even get changed. I jumped in my car, woof, went off. Spoke to my agent, I was in Brighton the next day. Abramovich came in. Everybody that was underneath me, Carlton Cole, all of these guys went through and played. That's mental. Yeah. When you think of- Because none of them was better than me. You're mad. Better than who? Where? Not nowhere, because none of them was better than me. But when I left, they just went, flourished and went through. 
John Terry came through Senrab as well. No, no doubt he would have been aware of your abilities at Chelsea. Did you and him sort of spend time together and stuff? Um, he's a bit older than me, isn't he? So, and they was really pushing him. So, not really. But a couple of times I did, you can ask him what happened. What happened? Ask him. Well, if I don't get a chance to ask him, I'll never know. Boy. Man, I'm going to say I'm gassing the thing, but I see he was getting spun regular. Wow. Regular. But then man will tell you that calm. It's not that ain't nothing. Do you get what I'm saying? That ain't, that ain't me. That ain't me here saying something and trying to big myself up. They will tell you that calm. Ask them. They will tell you calm. It's not. It's not an embarrassment. So you signed for Brighton on a free transfer with a clause saying no, no, if no, they no. will get promoted, there'll be a 50k arrangement for Chelsea. Is that right? Am I right here? I don't even know what went on there, to be honest. All I know is I wanted to get out and score some goals and celebrate in front of crowds. That's all I wanted to do. And Chelsea weren't giving me the platform for that. So I went on loan to Brighton at first, didn't I? Okay. I was on loan. And um, let me just Google the thing, because I'm going to say a score. I'm going to say a score thing and you lot are going to say, oh, he's chatting rubbish. But let me just get the actual record that I had while I was on loan. One second. I broke my phone as well, you know. So if I'm holding up your thingy, but I have to no, get it No, right, no, you, you take your time. You scored 26 goals in 46 games for Brighton. In your right, so I was on loan. Two appearances, four goals. So they said, hold up a minute. <laughs> they said, hold on a minute. Steve Koppel said, we've got Ian right here. And it's weird because your name's Leon, right? And it, when the crowd singing, it, Leon, Ian, it makes me, he, he was the one who said that. So that's all I had to hear, bruv. Ian, right? What? I was like, no way, you're chatting, Steve. He was like, bruv, you can score. I was like, no, I can score, but you're chatting. He was like, no, 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 you can do this. I was like, all right, cool. So I went there, four goals in two games. Steve Couple said, listen, we ain't got the money, but we would love to get you here. I said, come on, we're doing this. Simple. But he done a dirty on me and just went and went to Reading and didn't bring me to Reading. I came there because of Steve Couple. Then he blurted, got my mate, Lira Lita, who done magnificent at Reading, but he should have brought me to Reading with Lira Lita, brother. You mad? That would have been like you can call. Because Lita's my boy. Let's go back a bit. Steve Coppel, yeah, you, you obviously enjoyed working under Steve Coppel. He was a guy that knew how to sort of handle you by the sounds of it. No, he knew, like... So, for instance, we'd be doing a shooting session, right? And it's these little things that I like. So, we'd be doing a shooting session. And it would be like, I'll be second in line to go. So, someone would be pinging the ball from behind the goal, either side of the goal. You've got to take it down and score. So, I'll be second or third in line and... All of a sudden, you'd hear something on the back, like a, like, like, a, like skin on the side of your ear, and it would be couple, and he's only small like me, and he'd be, and he'd be saying, violence. And you'd be like, oh my God, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah, violence, intent. Bruv, when that ball came over, when I struck that ball, it was violence. <laughs> <laughs> there was violence so them little things are kind of like to get me grew to with him but he kind of he left man he left man I didn't really like how he left man but I respect him and, 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 and thank him for that little opportunity they gave him how, when, how would you describe things after Steve Koppel left how, how, how did you sort of settle in um, well that? Mark McGee came and if it was down to him I wouldn't have played at all do you get what I'm saying what, you, you didn't initially get on with Mark McGee then? Well, he didn't get on with me from the start. It was like he came in and he was telling me that he had an issue with me. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I'm just thinking to myself, all right, cool, no problem. I'm going to carry on going on the way I'm going on. And I did. I scored 27 that season. Got us promoted, scored the penalty to get us promoted. Got in the championship. And then he started doing this big man up front, two big men up front and some long ball thing. I'm not getting, don't get me wrong. Adam Virgo done well and this, that and the other. But come on, man. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So he didn't really want me about. And then we had a shuffle and an argument um, 
on the way down to Southampton. And um Did he did he kick you off the coach nah, 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 in nah, the nah, middle nah, of nah. the forest? No. Is this the story I'm He tried told? to kick me off the coach, but I said I said to him, Yeah. Basically this is what happened. Our main goalkeeper got dropped. The agent for the goalkeeper that was replacing our main goalkeeper had a stronghold with Mark McGee. We're going to Southampton. We're Little Brighton, remember. We're going to Southampton. Big stadium, rare area, and this, that, and the other. We need our full sky. First of all, he drops me. Then he drops the goalkeeper. So I said to the goalkeeper on the slide, nah, man, just let's go there, try and get the three points and get out of there and work next week and just go again. That's in my exact words. The coach, this fat boy, Dean White, goes and runs and goes and tells the manager and gives him a completely different story. Like I'm saying to him, you should, this is what he said to him. You sh he said, I said, you should be playing. Don't worry about that, re, 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 and this, that, and the other. And I didn't say that. If I said it, I will tell you I said it. Do you get what I'm saying? So I'm trying to tell the manager what I said. He's telling me, well, we don't need that kind of energy or if you, what if something you use, some word or something. So come off the coach. And the coach driver stopped the coach. So what happened then? I just went back to my seat. Because he's going on like he's going to kick. Bro, do you know where we was? There weren't even a road. It was in the middle of the new forest, right? There wasn't even a road. Do you know when like you're driving and you've got grass and then a ditch down and then there's fields all way back. So if you're walking, you're basically walking on mud and in the ditch. There's no concrete. Yeah? There's no ground. There's no ground. And you can't see a building in front of you. This is, this is the road we was going down to get to Southampton. So he, was, he was trying to get you out off the coach then. He wasn't having you going to the, to the, with the, the team to the coach, game. Off the coach, bruv. To do what? What am I going? I was in flip-flops. Do you get what I'm saying? I'm trying to think to myself, where did this guy want me to go? So I just sat back in the seat. And it was kind of like a stayed there for about five, six minutes. And then just carried on. So, and then he said to me, as I was coming off, I don't want you in the changing room and you're not in the squad. I was already dropped onto the bench, but he said, you're not in the squad. So I just, my dad came down to the game. So I didn't even watch the game. I just jumped in the car with my dad and kicked out. Next, two days later, I was at Swansea. Two days later, I was at Swansea. What was the last thing you said to Mark McGee? How did you and him leave? Nothing. How did you part? What was nothing. The... I didn't say anything to him. I parted without taking my boots, anything. I didn't take nothing. Not a shirt of remembrance, no nothing. The only thing I got was my, was my medal. That was when you, you scored the penalty to take Brighton up. Yeah. Big moment in the club's yeah. history as well. Yeah. That's, that's the only thing I've got from, from, from there. That doesn't tarnish that memory though, does it? The fact that it ended a bit sourly. It does a little bit. And the fans don't really, like, do you get what I'm saying? They don't really, when they're chatting about me, they don't really chat with the respect that they're meant to chat with. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because that season, you wouldn't have been doing anything if I weren't there. And that's not me bigging myself up, that's facts. Do you get what I'm saying? You moved to Swansea. Swansea at the time was a club on the, on the way up, if you like. They're, they're looking to bring in... A lot, of, a lot of respected players who maybe haven't reached the pinnacle of their career. Mm. You scored a hat-trick on your debut for Swansea. Talk me through that initial period before we get to that game. What, get in there? Yeah, no, not arriving in the car, but the whole build-up of... Um, I got there like... I think I got there on a... I got there on a Saturday. Signed my contract and that. But the thing about it is, I was only going there because Lee Trundle was to leave. And he was like a big cult hero there as well. Trundle. What I'm trying to say, I wouldn't have went there if he was there and this, that and the other. Unless they're telling me I'm playing up front with him yeah. and we're going to go and do our thing. But they had three other strikers at that time. So I really wouldn't have went there. Plus it was dropping down the league. I wouldn't have went there. So Mark McGee said, listen, I'm not Mark McGee. Kenny Jackett said, listen. Was Leon Britton there as well? Yeah. yeah. Kenny Jackett said, um, Gary Monk, who's the Birmingham manager or someone else, oh, Sheffield, I mean, good, Sheffield good Wednesday manager. For that, especially for that level that they're playing at. Bruv, what do you mean? Uh, Bayo Akinfenwa, Rory Fallon, Andy Robinson, Roberto Martinez. All these men can play. Yeah, so anyway, 
I wouldn't have went there if, if he never told me that Lee Trundle was leaving. Now, Lee Trundle was meant to leave. In the end, he didn't leave to go Bristol City. So now he was stuck with Rory Fallon, Bayo Akin Fenwa, Lee Trundle and me. Now, that's a good... Four, you need four strikers, yeah? That's a good little four strikers there. So I started off well. Was you in the, the starting order of them four strikers at the top tier of the pecking order or were you at the bottom order of the, of the four? In the manager's thinking, not in your own thinking, by the way. You can't drag someone out of the championship and tell them they're at the bottom of your striking list. That don't make no sense. You drag a man out of the championship and then bring him into a thing of, the, of a strike force of three and then tell him you're fourth. Did you feel like you was fourth, though? Hell no. I was number one, bruv. While I was there, it was short, but I was number one. You couldn't tell me nothing. <laughs> Nobody scored more goals than me at that time there. That period that I was there, you didn't score more goals than me. No, no, no forward did. Did you enjoy your time in Swansea? What, yeah. What, what, sort of, what was the, the issue in terms of you and the club parting and the club placing you on the transfer list? Can you explain to us what happened around that? Bruv, just one day, out of the blue, we had a meeting, a, uh, um, a, a squad meeting. After the meeting, Kenny Jacket said, Leon, stay behind. I thought my man was coming to talk to me about a new contract, bro. Because I was banging in the goals at that point there. I don't even know where it was, but I started off with a hat trick. I was doing madness. Training, I was flaming up. So I'm thinking, some new P. What's wrong, cuz? I'm thinking some new P's. Man tells me, I'm putting you on the transfer list. Bro, I'm not, dude, there's nothing to do in Swansea. What's your, um, what's your reaction to him when he said it to you? So he's told you this face to face. Right, let me tell you straight up and down, I had tears in my eyes. Wow. Because. You felt settled at that point. Not even settled, bro. But you know when a man, you know a man's fucking with you for no reason. Like, and you can't really do nothing about it bar just beat him up in, the, in where you are now. And that ain't going to do no, no, no. Um, you ain't doing no yourself, no justice there. Especially with your karate moves. I was thinking, you're thinking <laughs> one chop, it's all over. <laughs> it's all over. It? But, um, yeah, that's what that was it. Because I was kind of like, why? What are you talking about? Why? Do you get what I'm saying? I wasn't doing nothing at that time to say, this is the reason why. I wasn't playing shit to say this is the reason why. So when I asked him why, he couldn't tell me. He didn't, oh no, I still Do don't. Do you put know. it down to non-footballing reasons then? Has to be. Has to be. Because if you're a manager and you're telling your player you're on, you're on the transfer list, you're telling him why you're on the transfer list, no? Do you think it was out of his hands? Maybe, maybe the chairman or someone that said something to him? The chairman paid if, me up, so how is it going to be... If the, you're the manager and your top striker's performing, and in your words, you felt like you were the top striker, yeah. you wouldn't want to get rid of him, would you? Logically. No. So that's what I'm thinking. Do you think it came uh, from above the manager? Well, if it did, they paid me up as well, so... That don't make no sense. You just leave him on the um, transfer list to rot. You don't pay someone up. I just think Jacket wanted me out of the way for some reason. I don't know why. And it was off-field antics and I don't know what I've done. So when I see him, I'll be asking him. And if he ain't got an answer for me, I'm going to punch him in his face. And that is the gods on his truth. Still that rules yeah, you to yeah, this day. Yeah. Yeah. And man could take that as a joke or a threat or whatever. But when I buck into him, I'm not going to go look him. I don't even know where he is. No, but I know... That I'm gonna buck into him one time, and I'm gonna back. If he don't give me a good reason, I'm gonna punch him up. And I'm not asked what anybody has to say, or if man go old, oh, you're hard with that David Brent gif or whatever you wanna do. I'm not asked. Like that's how it sits in my system. So that's what that's what's gonna happen. You were loaned out to Barnsley. This is what I'm trying to say. Um, now, nah. oh, hear this, Barnsley. Explain Barnsley to me. Barnsley, a league up. That's interesting. So, so you've been literally... We tough. lost to Barnsley in the playoff final. Yeah. Bale Akinfenyo missed the pen. Yeah. yeah? We stay in the League One. Barnsley get promoted, go to the Championship. Yeah? They put me, Swansea put me on a transfer list. Barnsley said, fuck this, we're gonna, you're, you're coming here. But I was fucked in the head though at that time there. Because I'm thinking, why are these men not playing me? But then I think, 
fuck it. If they're not playing me, let me just go on loan and see what's going on. What was your first impressions as Barnsley as a city? Well, I, I, I weren't really, I didn't even see the city really. I just went up there, trained, got a little place and that was it. Really, but I, it was shit for me. I played shit, it was shit, everything was shit. Do you get what I'm saying? While we're on the subject of Barnsley, I watched your Under the Kosh video. Yeah. I quite enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, I said I thought you was true to yourself and you came yeah. across as you normally would. What was your views on the, the videos that you've done with those guys? Well, I don't like, <clears throat> like for instance now when I'm talking and I'm for instance, someone like, you're gonna debrief the whole, bod the whole podcast, yeah? But then you're trying to take the piss out of the, the guy that you... They've been trying to get me on the podcast for God knows how long. I did it as a favour from a mate, yeah? Because I said I'm not doing no podcast until I do my own. I'm not giving man no man no leverage on this, that and the other. And, and then when I come to my thing, nobody's doing no favours for me. But I done it for a favour for a mate. So I went on there now. And everyone was giggling, smiling and joking. I was drinking a beer and everything. Next day, I'm in, the, I'm in a WhatsApp group. Bare messages, I'm thinking. Must be some joke going on in there. Guy in there, 90, them man are taking a piss out of you on, the, on some debriefing on the, under the cosh. So I'm like, them man can never take the piss out of me. What, so there was a separate video, you mean, other than your podcast video? This is what I'm trying to say. Instead of debriefing in front of man and saying whatever you want to say and we can bust joke together, they're debriefing on a whole different day and taking the piss. Take the piss out of me if you want to take the piss to my face, innit? But none of them said nothing. When I was explaining all my stories, none of them said nothing. Now they're trying to, when they was debriefing, they was going on like I was exaggerating. I said, take the podcast off the thing. They're telling me about Amazon and this, that and the other and they can't take well, it you off. You genuinely wanted it taken down. I told I them to that take, was banter. No, I told them to take the thing off. Wow. You don't deserve nothing like that. Do you get what I'm saying? And they started jibber-jabbering and talking and this, that and the other and it ain't even gone off yet. Which one of the guys offended you? What? I don't know. I didn't even watch this. Is it as just the video, the aftermath video yeah, as a whole Yeah, of what they were you. saying. And then he, then... then when I see I'm, the Twitter stuff coming back and forth. When I'm going on Twitter and speaking to these guys, these guys are, uh, these guys are um, like throwing back kind of like banter to an extent. But when I'm on the phone on WhatsApp, they're like, nah, Leon, it didn't go like that. We're going to try and speak to Amazon to take it down. And da 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 And da 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 On the net. Do you get what I'm saying? And I'm thinking to myself, this ain't adding up. I said, take that off. Simple. But all now they ain't took it off. They're talking about Amazon. And they need to go and get rights for this. Oi, good episode, to be fair. Was a good episode. Well, this is what I'm trying to say. But episode. you don't disrespect the brother who's gave you that episode. Do you get what I'm saying? Or throw, try and throw side corner him like he's exaggerating. Exaggerating what? What do I need to exaggerate? I don't even. Need, I didn't even need to be there. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. To exaggerate. I'd just been in my house, calm, cool, calm and collected. Then man, they drag me out my house, bring me on a podcast, and then want to try and banter me after, and not even banter me to my face. You got any banter you wanna? Say well, to them, because what I've I don't got need. To, I don't need to say no banter to them. They're dickheads, bro. I don't need to say no banter to them. All now they ain't took off the podcast. Do you get what I'm saying? And I know it seems like man's always arguing and this and that and where, where, where. But I'm the kind of person if I don't like something, I'm just gonna tell you straight up and down. I'm not the kind of person to be like beating around a bush or speaking to a next man about another man. That's that. That's childish. Swiftly moving on. After that, you, you joined MK Dons, mm. which was quite an interesting move at the time. Can you explain to me the process of joining MK Dons? Um, I was in my house, because uh, I just got a little pay up from Swansea, and then the phone rang, it was my agent. He said, where are you? I said, I'm in my house. He said, Get ready. So I said, what do you mean, get ready, bruv? Uh, what do you mean? He said, I want you to go and watch a game. Someone's come to pick you up. So I said, who's coming to pick me up and what game am I going to watch? You're going to watch MK Dons versus Barnet. 
and Martin Allen's gonna come and pick you up from your house. I'll give him your address. So I'm saying, the mag dog's coming to my house to pick man up and bring man to the game. He was like, yeah. I was like, come on then, save. <laughs> come on then, I'm on the mag dog's antics, you get me? So he pulled up outside my house in the range, jumped in the range and we just sped off. And we was just chatting. And the reason why I kind of had respect for him and I went there is that we dismantled them in the playoff semi-final, Brentford. This is when he was at Brentford before he went to MK. We dismantled them. I scored two, we won 2-0. We got into the final of the playoffs with Swansea to play Barnsley. Now, he was the manager. Now, at the end of the game, I went to shake the keeper's hand. My banter going to shake his hand because obviously I dumped on him twice so I'm going to shake his hand not on no ha 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 but just like in my head my banter so I'm going to shake his hand and he just fucks me off like pars me and walks past me do you get what I'm saying and Martin Allen seen it and goes don't you fucking dare do that come and shake his hand like that so the goalkeeper had to shake my hand then he, Martin Allen put his hand around me and went you was fucking unbelievable today mate um, my team will learn from that or something along them lines there so that always sat with me nice. Do you get what I'm saying? That his team just got beat in the semi-final. He's telling his goalkeeper, make sure you shake his hand. Then he's coming up to me and talking to me in a way that, do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, like I said, he pulled up outside my house. We went to watch the game. He was manager. I just signed for him after. I just, I just, I just signed. I, I, I don't even know what it was. Like that... New stadium and all of that, do you get what I'm saying? They were just going into a new stadium, their, their chairman was ambitious and this, that and the other. And it was, I, just, I just signed for them and that was it. He left in the end and uh, Paul Lintz came in. First impressions of Paul Lintz? His breath stunk. Now I've heard you say this to the point where I'm watching TV and if I see Paul Lintz come you on smell the telly, something. I'm looking, no, I'm looking at people's Nah man, you smell something. Don't say you don't, you're looking. I'm you looking smell for something. a reaction. I'm I looking smell. for a reaction. Me, I You've smell something. You've done it that bad. You, I you smell something. You've absolutely killed him. Nah, he, 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 he's breast bad. It can't be that bad. It's bad, bruv. Like, I don't disrespect Paul Lintz. I only say about his breath. Nah, Paul Lintz at MK. I think to see someone that you will disrespect. You've absolutely <laughs> annihilated Nah, Paul nah, Paul Lintz, that ain't a disrespect saying a man's breath stinks. That ain't a disrespect because his breath stinks. Do you get me? I'll also, I'll also pay, pay, pay homage and tell them, in training, shooting comps, he was up there. Techers wise, everything up there. Yeah? But couldn't stand next to us in the line because his breath stunk. That's simple. So, do you get what I'm saying? It's not like a dissing thing. I'm telling you the, the truth of the thing. Certain man might go up behind people's back and go, oh, Paul Lins, his breath stinks. But they ain't going to say it out on the net. Or, 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 or to his face or anything. I'm telling you, man, his breast stinks. Simple. It got to the point where I know how funny you are about smells and stuff. I sprayed a little bit of Febreze before you came into <laughs> the, to the office today. Brought out a, little, a couple of little nah, nice nah, scents. Nah, 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 so nah, nah, nah I like that. But here, yeah. Uh, yeah, man, he, 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 he didn't really take to me. In either. what way? He said I listened too much to my dad. Interesting. That he does with his son. Do you understand what I'm saying? This is what I'm talking about, bruv. So when I see, when I, when like, I've been, I've been outcasted for that, then I see him doing certain things with his son, and I figure to myself, hold up a second, but this is all my dad wanted to do for me. And you didn't want to have none of it. And I weren't having none of you talking about my dad. So we kind of like, was at a standoff. I was at home for about a month and a half, getting paid. What, not training? Not so training, nothing. Playing Call of Duty. Wow. For about a month and a half. Then I just said, then, then, the, um, what's the chairman's name? He owns Marshall, um, not owns, but I think he's got a little percentage in Marshall speakers and all that. What's his name? Anyway, the chairman, he was all right with me, he was cool. He paid man up and I went Russian and diamonds. <laughs>